We know that his top campaign officials like Katie Telford would have been aware of this help and we need to know exactly what she knew and what the Prime Minister knew. Only she can answer these questions. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition knows very well that our government has always been very transparent with Canadians in terms of the efforts that we have made, Mr. Speaker, to counter foreign interference in our democratic institutions. It's and welcome back. MPs are set to hear from the Prime Minister's top aide later this week. Katie Telford will testify at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, the committee currently studying allegations of foreign election interference. This comes after Liberal MP spent two weeks filibustering to stall a vote that called her to appear before the committee. And with David Johnson given a mandate to determine whether or not Canada needs a public inquiry into foreign interference. So what are the politics of her testimony and what new information can she offer up to the committee and to the public? Let's bring in our front bench to weigh in. Sabrina Grover was a federal liberal candidate in the 2021 election. She's now a principal at Shakti Strategies. Melanie Paradis is the former communications director to Aaron O'Toole, the foreign, uh, former conservative leader. She's now the president of Texture Communications. And Kathleen Monk is an NDP strategist and principal owner of Monk and Associates. And CTV's senior political correspondent, Glenn McGregor, is here. Hello to the four of you. Happy hey. Monday. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Kathleen, I want to start with you because initially the NDP were not clamoring for mm -hmm. Katie Telford to testify. Then they went ahead and changed their mind. They said, yes, she should testify. Testify. So, what's the big deal? Why does the end? Why did the NDP weigh in on this? Well, the NDP has been working with the other opposition parties in committee to really push for some of the testimony. In fact, they were joint signees, if you will, to a letter as well to the Privy Councillor that just went out last Thursday, demanding more information. But the NDP has been working in concert, really, with the Conservative opposition to get the information to committee. That said, it's really been the Conservatives who've been driving Katie and the desire for Katie Telfer and the Chief of staff to testify. So this is their push for her to testify. And I actually think it's really strange because we know we're not going to get the information out of Katie Telford. We've seen her testify before, whether it's in the We Charity scandal, whether we've seen her at the public um, inquiry into the, the convoy. You know, we know that she is very measured in her testimony and she will know what she can say and what she can't say. So it is going to be a bit of political theater on Friday. That said, we have the date now. Now we're waiting for the evidence dump that's going to come from the Privy Council. They have to do a huge evidence dump, and we'll see what happens. Get, grab your popcorn. I, I'm seeing you nodding here. So, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I can't figure out their fixation with Katie Telford. Mm -hmm. It's like they've decided she's like the Kaiser Soze figure of this government, <laughs> you know, hiding behind the, the throne, pulling all the strings. Uh, and I've never, it, maybe we've Chief of Staff to Prime Ministers come and go in this town. I don't think anyone uh, before her has attracted this kind of attention and interest, maybe because it's, she's served for a fairly long time now. Mm -hmm. Seven years is a long time uh, for Chief yeah. of Staff. But I, I don't think we're going to get, and I don't think the Conservatives are going to get what they're looking for either because, as Kathleen says, she's uh, pretty well versed at handling committee testimony. She's done it uh, before uh, with some, some degree of success. And there isn't really that much she can say that isn't covered by confidentiality. She can't start disclosing official secrets mm -hmm. uh, before well, this it. committee well, and, and what they want to know. Is saying. Yeah, and the Conservatives want to know, basically, what did the Prime Minister know about these 11 writings that are in dis you know, disputed, potentially involving Chinese interference? What did he know about Handong? When did he know? We've already had Jody Thomas, who actually does the security briefing of the Prime Minister before that committee, mm -hmm. and she, she didn't really tell him much. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's wishful thinking uh, on the part of the opposition that you're going to get more information from her that we don't already have. Okay, so as Sabrina Grover, so the, the Liberals fought hard not to have her testify and, and, and you know, sort of allowing the, the Conservatives to have this narrative that clearly the Liberals are hiding something and it must be so bad. I remember the, the, the comments uh, during question period. So was that a bad strategy to fight so hard not to have her testify to then have her testify now? 
So, I mean, I think at the outset, Katie already agreed to testify even before the, the filibuster happened, which I think is an important part of like that honesty and transparency piece. At the, at the end of the day, having staff testify in any committee for any party, I think is a bad precedent. I think it sets uh, up staff up poorly to be scrutinized for ministerial accountability or elected official accountability when they really don't need to be. So I think that's uh, you know something that should be said. Is it was it a bad strategy? I think it definitely fed into the idea that there might have been something to say. But at the end of the day, the Liberals have been forthcoming with uh, you know committee documents coming forward, with uh, the investigation coming forward. So there's nothing really that they are hiding, and they haven't been hiding anything to this point. This is a really important issue for us. We do need to be concerned about democratic interference from the Chinese, but this isn't the way to do it. So, Melanie, conservatives are saying this is all a liberal cover-up. Um, did you see, you know, an attempt by the liberals to, 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 to cover up some conspiracy with the Chinese Communist Party? Like, is, is, is this sort of a, a realistic thing the conservatives are saying? Well, I think it's certainly realistic. A lot of the, the media leaks that we've been seeing uh, of late have been very disconcerting, and I think that we absolutely need to have a public inquiry. I think ultimately David Johnson is going to determine that that's what is needed as a, as a next step so that we can find out what exactly uh, has been happening over the past many years. We've had some testimonies at committee from, from national security experts over the past couple of weeks that have been quite illuminating and, and concerning um, that probably haven't gotten as much attention as, as Katie Telford's upcoming testimony has. Um, I think that uh, just to, to echo what, what uh, has been said already, that she, this is an individual who's been at committee twice before. She has performed quite well previously. I, I fully expect that she's going to be very well briefed and, and trained and prepared to, to go to committee. She knows what to expect. She knows what type of questions, um, the kind of gotcha style to, that she can expect from, from committee and how to avoid those, those things. And, and as noted, she is covered under cabinet confidentiality to, to a certain extent, although I would note that she's also been involved in politics for much longer than this government has been the government. And surely um, she might be asked some questions about the time that she spent uh, in Ontario previously and, uh, and if she had heard of anything going on then, because some of this evidence it dates back so far that it's entirely possible that um, some of her testimony might, might not be simply from this government. Oh, interesting. That's, that's interesting. I want to go very quickly around the table. What are you, uh, what are you looking at, uh, for? Well, it will be a blockbuster week in terms of uh, this particular story of election interference. Why? Because we know it's been over a month since Jody Thomas and the CSIS officials um, testified. The Privy Council has to deliver that, those dockets of information sometime this week before Katie arrives. So we'll get that information and then we'll get Katie's testimony on Friday. It's going to be interesting. I'm looking to see how this changes the arc of the story. It wasn't that long ago. A couple of weeks ago, you had columnists across the country tearing their hair out saying this was the end of the Liberal government. This was a, you know, the yeah. Trudeau could not recover from this. Then the Han Dong uh, report came. He threatened to sue. It says he's going to sue for libel. And everything kind of just went away a little bit. I don't think the story's gone. The story's going to be with us for a while. But it doesn't seem as nearly as toxic as it did a few weeks ago. We'll see what the reaction is on one day, whether we're still talking about Sabrina, it. Sabrina, what are you going to be looking at? More the questions or the answers? I'm going to be looking at uh, the answers, but I'm also going to be looking at the conservative reaction. So how do they actually try to spin this even further, right? I think we've got the information that we need. I think there's already a commitment to, to do more. So what are we seeing from the conservatives on, on spinning this more? Melanie, what are you going to be looking for? Yeah, I, I think that the there's a real need to resist the urge to spike the ball here, or resist the urge to score political points that are that are needless. We need to have a public inquiry. So I'm looking for more solid information that helps us get towards a public inquiry. So I'm, I'm going to have to leave that there. But you guys are staying, Sabrina, Melanie, Kathleen, and Glenn. You'll be sticking around. Coming up, 